Well, good morning and welcome to the Temiskaming Deanery Morning Prayer for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Today I will be your officiant. I am Joan Locke. Our preacher will be the Reverend Graham Stapp. Graham is currently the interim at um, St. John's here in North Bay. Um, the Reverend or Linda White will be our reader. Linda is uh, the interim incumbent down at Trillium Parish. And we will have Janet uh, Perfett on music and vocals. Janet is a member of the congregation at St. Bryce's. Anyone who serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. Our opening hymn is Give Me Jesus. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Cast your burden upon the Lord. And he will sustain you. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day. The God of our salvation who bears our burdens. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. Our first reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Pray together. Almighty God, to you who all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Hebrews. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn or song is Glorify Thy Name. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the be with you and also with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to john glory to you lord jesus christ now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some greeks they came to philip who was from Bethsaida in galilee and said to him sir we wish to see jesus philip went and told andrew then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me and the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. 
and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I come to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus knew that he was about to die. It was his choice. He knew that we were a stubborn people and needed a baseball bat around the head to understand just how much God truly loved us. And yet even in this stressful time, he took time to explain to the disciples about what was going to happen. Jesus himself was this grain of wheat. He would die and rise again and bear much fruit. I want to tell you a story about somebody in this day and age that I believe has borne much fruit. His name is Harold Percy. He was the rector of the Anglican Church in Streetsville, Ontario. Asked to go there by the bishop, the church was slowly dying. The congregation were far more interested in budget than in mission. After he'd been there for a period of time, he called the bishop and said, you know, I've got two choices. I can either stay here and look over the demise of this church, or I can try something new and start again. The bishop said, go to it. It can't be worse than it is now. And so he did. And he changed the church. He changed the music. And the music was now upbeat and lively. He changed the youth and children's programs and brought in people that could relate to children and youth. He himself was a great preacher, but he would bring in others to preach and spread the word of God. When the gospel was read in the church, it wasn't read by somebody standing in the middle of the aisle. It was said by various people throughout the congregation, and it was put on as a type of play. It really worked, and the church started to grow. It grew rapidly. And then on April the 26th, 1998, it burnt to the ground. It was arson, but the church was no longer there. And Harold, standing looking at the ashes, had a microphone thrust into his face. What are you going to do now? He just stammered, I, I don't know. But then he started to think, this is an opportunity. Now we can really do something. We were planning to expand anyway. Now we can start afresh from new. And the wonderful thing was that other churches in the area, different denominations, sent money to the church to help rebuild it. From that fire, that grain of wheat, grew a new and even bigger and better church. Harold wrote some wonderful books. One of the best was Following Jesus, First Steps on the Way. And that's what he did. He followed Jesus, First Steps on the Way. He put his trust in God that the church would rise from the ashes and begin again. I think that we are now this grain of wheat. We are the ones that need to fall into the earth and bear much fruit. And then we need to step away from our comfort zone and start looking at things in a different light. Start understanding that our job is to bring the word of Christ to the people that God created. We need to step forward and speak out 
and not allow things to falter. It's so hard during this time of COVID to help people understand that this is an earthly thing, not something sent from God, but an earthly thing. And sometimes earthly things truly get in our way and we don't know how we can handle them or what we can do. But we need to take faltering steps. We need to follow Jesus and take an example from him that even in the hour that he knew he was going to die, still took time to explain things to his disciples, to be there for the people around him. We need also to be there for the people around us. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. We pray in our world today for peace. We pray um, for, uh, particularly in our church, we pray for Anne, our Archbishop, and for Linda, our Primate. In our diocesan chain of prayer, we pray today for St. Bryce's Parish here in North Bay, the Reverend Dr. Peter Armstrong, and the Venerable Marie Lowen. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of England. We pray for the Church of England in England and for wherever it exists around the world. We pray God's continued blessing on the Diocese of Terime, on Bishop Muita, and particularly this week for the Church at Kit Gassember and the Reverend Charles Nicholas. We pray today for our own congregations as we wait with patience the opportunity to meet again to worship. We pray for strength, for steadfastness, and to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, looking for every opportunity to bless others in these long and difficult days. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the mission of the church. We pray for each one of us that we will find the words and that in faithful witness, we and our congregations may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those preparing for baptism and for confirmation and for their teachers and sponsors. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for peace in the world and particularly for the current conversations happening between the United States and China, that they may find a way to be at peace and to come to a new understanding of how to work together for the good of the world. We pray especially for Meng Wanzhou and for the two Canadian Michaels for strength and for endurance and for God's justice for their cases. We pray for the nation of Syria having marked 10 years of civil war. We pray for peace for that land. 
And we pray for the troubled places of the world, especially those we rarely hear about. We pray for Yemen and for Somalia, for Ethiopia, for Myanmar, for Hong Kong. And we pray especially for the nation of Brazil, really struggling with the COVID pandemic. And so for peace in the world and that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and people, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19 these days, for those who are in hospitals, for those who, are, uh, who work in the healthcare professions and all support workers. We pray for all of us for endurance as we await vaccines, for safety and wisdom for us during this third wave. We pray for those who are on our prayer chains and we pray for ourselves in our areas of most need in these days. For all who are persecuted, particularly the persecuted church throughout the world, for the sick and for all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, you. During this Lent time, as we do that self-reflection, which will lead to amendment of life, for all we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray with thanksgiving for those blessings of God, those rich blessings which we recognize and which we bring silently before the Lord with thankful hearts at this time. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Collect for the day. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, you created humanity anew. May the power of his victorious cross transform those who turn in faith to him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for grace, Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of peace transform you by his grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love 
from this day forward. Amen. Our final hymn is Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. invite you to join the various services that are available through the week. Archbishop Ann offers sunrise prayers at 715 on her Facebook channel or Facebook page um, on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if you're not up at early, you can um, access that also on her Facebook page after that. She will be beginning this coming week to offer evening prayer as well. And just stay tuned to her Facebook page for that, for the details of that. We continue with the BCP Compline services on Tuesday and evening prayer from the BAS on Thursdays. These will be available anytime after 4 p.m. on the Deanery, Tomiskaming Deanery, Diocese of Algoma YouTube channel. To access that, please Google Tomiskaming Deanery Diocese of Algoma and check your congregation's web page or Facebook page for ongoing information on other events. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>